Do you find it stressful when going to a restaurant and not know what to order? Do you find it confusing whether you should order an appetizer or you should just have a regular main? We are here at Grazie Ristorante in Vaughan, Ontario. And I'm going to teach you how to order at a restaurant, how to feel confident and not feel worried when making choices. John, thanks for having me here today. Glad to have you here, Dimitri. How long have you been at Grazia for? I've been with Grazia since 1993. We have two locations, one at Young and Eglinton. We're here in Vaughan at this location. We were here since uh, 2008. Now, for some of the viewers watching and they, they're worried about making healthy Italian meals or Mediterranean meals, the meals you guys make here, are they things that take a lot of time to prepare or are they easy ingredient based? They do take a lot of prep time to prepare. Got but uh, the final product is very quick and easy to uh, produce. Everything we make is from scratch. We only use fresh pasta. All our dough is made in-house. Everything we do is all made in-house. I'm gonna be going through some appetizers. Sure. I'll be going through some main courses. Obviously, you'll be preparing them. Mm -hmm. We'll catch you in action. I'm gonna have to squeeze a little bit of food in me and taste it myself. Absolutely. All right, I'm excited. So before we actually get into making these delicious meals, we wanna talk about the Mediterranean diet and why it's an easy to follow, approachable diet that many people around the world have been following for years. Now the Mediterranean diet focuses on having plant-based, high nutrient dense foods, high fiber foods. It's based on having a lot of lean proteins and not so much the lean proteins that are red meat based. We're talking about fish, we're talking about chicken, we're talking about poultry, some cheeses, foods that are not gonna be so hard, high in saturated fat, moderation in dairy, and also in alcohol and wine. Because a lot of people, when they're looking at having a specific meal plan, they're very restricted and sometimes they feel that they can't be having specific types of food. The Mediterranean diet also focuses on lifestyle and actual food enjoyment. You see, in North America, we're always too busy and we're too stressed and we're eating on the go and we're eating in our car or eating at our desk. And we want to remember that food time is a time of enjoyment. It's a time of sitting down with family and friends and actually enjoying the food you're eating so you can actually metabolize it properly and not be rushed. It's been shown to help people with heart health efficiency over the years. It's amazing for weight management and it's also great for mental health. But most importantly, the Mediterranean diet is the delicious, authentic style of cuisine that anybody can make in any place and anywhere. So first in the menu, we're gonna talk about how to choose appetizers. When you go to a restaurant, sometimes people are worried about choosing an appetizer because they're on a specific diet. They wanna lose weight and they've been trying really hard to follow the program, but they feel that appetizers may throw them off. Let's go into the kitchen. Chef John is waiting for us, and we're gonna go through making four amazing appetizers that you guys will enjoy. So here we have, we're making our uh, burrata salad. Burrata is a traditional Italian soft cheese, and it's made with mozzarella and something called stracciatella inside. So it's nice and creamy inside, and uh, on the outside of it is uh, mozzarella. Chef John, give us a little breakdown. I know you told me these are your most, some of your most popular appetizers. What are they and uh, what's in them? Let's start off here. This is our uh, burrata salad. Mm, my uh, wife's favorite. Your wife's favorite. Heirloom tomatoes, cucumbers, red onions, 
fresh basil and olive oil and a little bit of oregano. That's the burrata cheese. It's uh, fresh mozzarella and it's wrapped up uh, around uh, a creamy stracciatella in Italian, it's called. Similar to cottage cheese. Yeah. Uh, it's very high in protein, I know very that. Very high in protein. Cottage cheese is, yes. About 20 grams of protein just in that little ball, and when yeah. you slice it up, it's nice and creamy inside. Very, exactly. Very awesome. fresh, very fresh. And we've all obviously got it drizzled with some olive oil. Olive oil, extra virgin olive oil always. Awesome. What do we got over here? Here we have our sila salad. It's our take on a uh, antipasto di mare, which is uh, poached shrimp and uh, calamari. Marinated with garlic, olive oil, fresh lemon juice, parsley, herbs, and whatnot. And for those of the viewers who don't know what poached means, what does that mean? Poached would mean is it, it like it's a boiled or it's no? It's simmered, simmered in a uh, flavored water, let's say, Got and it. it's flavored with vegetables uh, like celery, onions, um, awesome. some garlic, very low lemon cal juice, very, very low protein. calorie, very high protein. Yes, yep. this is a very high protein, low calorie. Good option for an appetizer and yep. it's shareable. Yep. Here we have our margarita pizza, which is also available. You can have it as an appetizer to share yep. and uh, or a main course. And it's just um, basically cheese on your thin crusted Italian pizza, right? Exactly. Our dough is made uh, every day, twice a day. Um, fresh basil, mozzarella cheese and fresh tomatoes fresh tomato sauce, puree. And and the big thing about the component about pizza is a lot of people are used to eating like the North American based pizzas where the doughs are that high. Correct. They're they're making it with the worst, you know, cheapest ingredients. Correct. It's going to be high inflammatory for them, spiking blood sugar versus something like this that's, you know, homemade. We use we use a uh, double zero flour, very high in uh, protein. Awesome. And uh, we mix it uh, with high protein bread flour as well. We have a blend that we uh, put together ourselves. Awesome. And on this side, we have our very popular fried calamari. It's one of my favorites. One of your favorites. You got it. All Not protein. the best option, Well, I would say, it's, if it's, you're it's staying it's a, away from fried food. It's a mixture it's, between staying away from fried foods, having some balance, but then also getting that high protein, exactly. which is going to help you out. Yeah, and we serve it with our uh, homemade uh, lemon and black pepper aioli garlic and lemon juice. Awesome, awesome. When you're dealing with ordering appetizers, which is one of the most popular questions people ask me, can I have an appetizer if I'm trying to lose weight? And I tell people the one thing you want to focus on is, one, you want to have high protein based appetizers. Correct. Because if you're going to be having something like this sila salad, you ain't going to spike your blood sugar, you're going to give yourself more satiety feeling for that meal, and you're also going to work on building muscle tissue, which the focus on everyone's fitness program, whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, should be on muscle-centric medicine, which is essentially building muscle tissue, getting stronger, okay? So one, you wanna have a protein-based appetizer. As you can see here with the salad over here, your main cheese, your burrata cheese, is gonna give you roughly around 20 grams of protein. And that, would you say that's 100 grams or 200 grams? Uh, that's about 125 grams. Perfect. Over here with your sila salad, with your shrimp and your different um, seafood, easily 30, 40 grams of protein. When it comes to appetizers, the second thing you want to focus on is staying away from high starchy carbs that are going to spike blood sugar before your meal. Now, an example is going to be your pizza, or if you had a bruschetta, or if you had uh, the dinner rolls that come out to your, to your, your table before a meal that are just served with butter. Now, it's okay to enjoy life and have a mixture. So if me and you sat down and we had a bunch of people over here and you're having one slice of pizza and you're gonna be having some salad and some protein on it, that's okay. But if you're gonna be ordering an appetizer that's gonna be pure bread based or carbohydrate based and your goal is to lose body fat, you're basically or essentially having a double meal by spiking blood glucose and also having way more calories in that meal because there's no protein in it. Now lastly, we talk about fried foods. You did mention having fried foods to be careful. Now my big thing is this, if you're gonna be having fried food, try to stick with a fried food that is protein based again. So if I'm gonna be having something like calamari as an appetizer, and yes, the calories may be higher, if I'm gonna be choosing between a fried calamari or a fried squid or some fried chicken skewers or some beef skewers, it's still gonna be a better option than having a pure carbohydrate based appetizer. One, due to the fact that you have a lower 
calorie content. Two, you're not looking at spiking blood sugar for the whole meal. And three, you can mix this with the salad to combination it into a better appetizer. I'm getting hungry and I think we should start having some of these. And then when we come back, we're gonna talk about choosing main courses. How's that? That's perfect. All right, let's go to work. Next, we're gonna be talking about emphasizing the importance of actually navigating through your main course meals. The three things that I wanna tell you to guide you when choosing your main course meals is one, let's talk about picking a meal that's gonna actually work within your fitness goals. Let's talk about actually understanding proper food portion sizes. And then also number three is making sure that the meals you're choosing are appropriate with your body type. Remember, your body type the food you eat and the calories you burn are gonna dictate the outcome of your fitness goals and essentially your body composition. Okay guys, we have our delicious meals over here. Now let the viewers know which one is which so they can kind of understand here. Okay, so this is our Chefalu, uh, one of our very popular pastas and it's very uh, high in protein. It's got your carbs, vegetables, and again, the ricotta with the pesto. And it's a different flavor because we don't have your traditional tomato sauce, which exactly. I like. Changing exactly. Changing it up is nice. Yes. Okay, what do we um, got over here? Italian food is not all about tomato sauce. You got it. You got to have a mixture. This is our uh, Fettina ai ferri, which is a grilled veal cutlet. Very simply done, marinated with garlic and uh, herbs, olive Very oil. Nice. Very nice. It comes with an arugula salad, fresh arugula salad, cherry tomatoes, a couple of potatoes, so you have your carbs. Here we have our salmon. Our salmon is served with a kale salad, apples, and oh, uh, big that salad kale, is. Beets, I love it. Apples. Now, one thing to remember here is when you're choosing your mains, uh, my wife and many people often ask me, is it okay for me to have just appetizers versus your mains? Now, I'm gonna break it down for you. If you're looking at all these mains over here, here you got like two small potatoes, okay? Again, two small potatoes. And if I were to break down the amount of carbs in that, I'm gonna say maybe maximum 20 grams of carb. If you wanna have appetizers, you can easily pick two or three appetizers for this fact that A, you can mix in a protein appetizer with a salad, and then if you had a slice of pizza, that can make a whole meal, because every meal requires a protein, a carbohydrate, and a fat. When it comes to carbohydrates, you're gonna have your three main types. One, the worst types, your refined carbohydrates, processed foods, snacks, candies, ones that are high in sugar, we don't wanna have. The next two are gonna be your high fiber, um, nutrient dense carbohydrates, which are gonna be fruits and vegetables. And as you can see, you got about two fists of vegetable in each plate over here. And then you have your starchy carbohydrates. The starchy carbohydrates are the ones you wanna watch out for. So if you wanna order a bunch of appetizers, and let's say for example, you want to have the burrata salad, which gives you a dense plate of vegetables, a nice portion of protein, and a nice healthy high fat cheese. You can also mix that with a sila salad or with a calamari. And then if you wanted to have some form of carb for that meal, you can easily have a slice of pizza. Or if me and John are gonna share this plate of pasta, I can split this plate of pasta and then go back to a sila salad. So to answer the question, yes, you can have a mixture of appetizers if you want, because then you can share the meals around and you're not stuck to feeling like you have to eat one plate. If you're gonna be going to talk about portion sizes, very simple here. When you're looking at a protein portion, you're looking at the density of your hand almost like about four to five ounces for a female and six to seven ounces for a male. If we're looking at fat content, fat content is typically two thumbs worth or two ounces worth of fat per meal. If we're looking at vegetables, you can see that both these meals have a good portion of two fists of actual vegetables in your plate as a nice high fiber source of, of carbohydrates. And then if we're talking about mixing it all together, we wanna to talk about body type and actually what goal you have. If we're choosing mains, I mentioned in the beginning, you wanna be health conscious based on your fitness goal and based on your body type. So if you're an endomorphic person and you notice that you have a challenging time breaking down carbohydrates and your goal is to lose body fat and you're gonna have a whole plate of pizza as your main course, it's probably not gonna be the best scenario because you're gonna spike blood sugar for that whole meal, you got no protein to keep you full, and you're probably gonna be hungry within the next two, three hours due to the fact that that sugar is being diverted out and stored. If you're looking at having a weight loss meal, keep it simple. Half of your plate should be broken down into vegetables. The other half should be broken down into a protein portion, and then the next one is gonna be broken down into a mixture of a starchy carb and your fat. That way, the primary portion of that meal is gonna be way more vegetable-based 
The second biggest portion will be your protein. And the third biggest portion will be your carbohydrates and your fat. If your goal is to put on muscle, and you struggle with gaining weight, having a meal like this would not be sufficient for you because there's not enough carbohydrates. So all you would have to do is focus on ordering something like a pasta, which is gonna give you a, a minimum one and a half cup or two cups of pasta to give you that nutrient dense, low carbohydrate to store out for a few hours. And then you can mix it with a protein and salad to balance off your meal. The most important part about going out to a restaurant is also having the confidence to ask your waiter of what's in the meal. When I go to a restaurant and I'm ordering any type of main dish, the first thing I ask them is how many ounces are in the protein? So if I'm gonna be having the salmon, I would ask how many ounces are in the salmon? They may say six. How many ounces are in my veal? They may say five, seven. How many ounces are in my steak or my chicken? Reason being is, a guy that's my size, 195, who's trying to put on muscle, we need minimum six to eight ounces of protein in our plate. Now for a female, you can get away with three to four or five ounces based on what you're looking at having and also making the portion available for your specific need. Another thing you wanna ask the portion um, or ask your waiter is, what is in the salad? What's in the salad dressing? Reason being, if they say that the salad is made with olive oil, some balsamic vinegar, cranberries and some raisins, if you're a health conscious person that's looking to not put on the extra pounds, just say to them, do me a favor, can you not put the cranberries or the raisins in my salad, have it on the side? If they're making pasta and you love pasta, but you know that they're gonna be adding additional ingredients, such as a pesto sauce, such as cheese or added butters, you can just ask them to put some of that stuff on the side. And if you're really worried about what's in the meal, before you get to the restaurant, grab the menu, go through it, see if the options are gonna be healthy for you so that they're not gonna be bugging you in case you have a food intolerance, in case you're trying to look at specific foods that are not supposed to be on your meal plan, and you wanna make sure that you're having a balanced approach. Most importantly, John, I think that people should recognize that food is supposed to be a time to be enjoyed. Exactly. If we're constantly worried about going out to a restaurant because it's gonna ruin your actual health goals. I think that specific fear of you going out and enjoying yourself is gonna make fitness not a lifestyle. It's gonna make fitness be something that's not enjoyable. And then that's gonna break down your ability to sustain it for long term. If you've been training, if you've been getting your goals, and if you've been staying away from foods that are not part of your program, then there's no reason why you can't go out on a weekend and enjoy something healthy with friends and family. Now, I think we've done a lot of talking. I think we should jump in here because I'm getting hungry. What do you say? Absolutely, let's do it. All right, guys, like they say in Italy, buon appetito and welcome to Grazie Restaurante. <laughs>